Most people think Starship launches straight up, clean and effortless, like a pencil being lifted off a desk, but the reality is far more violent. In the first few seconds after ignition, Starship isn't just fighting gravity, it's fighting a twisting force powerful enough to tear steel apart, rupture fuel lines, and destroy the vehicle before it even clears the tower. That force is torque, and during liftoff, it reaches levels no rocket in history has ever been designed to manage at this scale. What makes this even more shocking is that Starship relies on a combination of precise engine control and ground infrastructure to stay stable, without the traditional rigid clamps holding it down like on older rockets. So how does SpaceX prevent a nearly 400-foot-tall, roughly 11-million-pound rocket from twisting itself apart at liftoff? The answer involves the orbital launch mount, rapid thrust vectoring, and an integrated system that includes the tower known as Mechazula for post-launch catching. And by the end of this video, you'll understand why Starship stability systems aren't just innovative, they're essential for making reusable rocketry at this scale possible. If you enjoy deep technical explanations that actually make sense, hit like and subscribe now, because this is where rocket physics stops being mysterious. At liftoff, Super Heavy ignites 33 Raptor engines, each producing up to 580,000 pounds of thrust at sea level with the latest Raptor 3 versions, though earlier flights used Raptor 2 engines at around 510,000 pounds. That adds up to over 19 million pounds of total thrust, more than twice the liftoff thrust of Saturn V, and the highest ever produced by a launch vehicle. But those engines do not ignite with perfect symmetry. Even a 1% thrust difference between engine clusters can generate thousands of foot-pounds of rotational force. When you're dealing with millions of pounds of thrust spread across an engine skirt about 30 feet wide, small imbalances create enormous torque. This torque peaks at the worst possible moment when Starship is fully fueled with over 10 million pounds of liquid methane and liquid oxygen, when tank pressures are at their highest, and when the vehicle is at its tallest, most flexible configuration, standing about 397 feet tall stacked. Unlike shorter rockets, Starship behaves less like a rigid column and more like a flexible vertical beam. At nearly 400 feet tall, it bends under load. Add torque to that bending and you introduce twisting modes that can resonate throughout the structure. These aren't hypothetical concerns. Uncontrolled torsional oscillations can amplify rapidly and lead to structural failure. And making the situation even worse, Starship's propellant isn't static. Thousands of tons of cryogenic liquid are sloshing inside tanks almost 30 feet in diameter. As thrust ramps up, that liquid lags behind the structure, shifting the center of mass and feeding even more torque back into the vehicle. This is why the first three seconds of flight are the most dangerous of the entire mission, with risks of imbalance highest before the rocket gains speed and aerodynamic forces kick in. Traditionally, rockets solve this problem using massive hold-down systems. Saturn V used powerful hold-down arms that restrained the vehicle until engines reached stable thrust. Falcon 9 uses a strong back and clamp system integrated into the launch mount. These systems absorb torque and lateral loads while the engines stabilize. Starship adapts this approach for rapid reuse, tower catching, and fast turnaround. It uses about 20 to 24 hold-down clamps on the orbital launch mount, a massive reinforced concrete and steel pad under the tower. These clamps grip the booster's base and hold it down during engine ignition and initial thrust buildup. The engines start at partial power and ramp up over a few seconds. Once thrust exceeds the vehicle's weight, about 11 million pounds fully fueled, the clamps release automatically, allowing liftoff without explosive bolts or rigid restraints that could damage reusable hardware. But Starship's design pushes boundaries further. Heavy base clamps are minimized to avoid interfering with heat shielding, landing hardware, and the catch mechanism. Instead of relying solely on ground anchors for all stability, SpaceX emphasizes onboard systems from the start. As the Raptors ignite and thrust begins to rise, any imbalances are immediately countered by Thrust Vector Control, or TVC. Each Raptor engine can gimbal, pivot by up to 15 degrees in multiple directions, adjusting thrust vectors multiple times per second to neutralize torque. 
This active control is guided by onboard inertial measurement units, IMUs, gyroscopes, and computers that monitor the vehicle's orientation in real time. Engine startup is sequenced in clusters to minimize initial asymmetry, with outer rings igniting first for better stability. The OLM's clamps provide the initial restraint, absorbing early torque spikes for a brief window, typically under a second, while thrust stabilizes. This isn't a damping system like shock absorbers, it's more about secure hold-down until the rocket is ready to fly free. Once released, the vehicle lifts off at a few feet per second with no mechanical guidance from the tower. Aerodynamic damping is minimal at low speeds, so everything depends on TVC and precise propellant management working together. Internal tank baffles, ring-like structures inside the methane and oxygen tanks, reduce sloshing by breaking up waves in the liquids, preventing them from amplifying rotations. Real-time algorithms adjust engine throttling and gimballing to compensate for any residual shifts in center of mass. What makes this approach revolutionary is how integrated Starship is with its ground infrastructure, even if the tower itself isn't directly involved in liftoff stability. The tower, nicknamed Mechazilla, features massive chopstick arms on a hydraulic carriage for stacking the Starship upper stage onto Super Heavy and, most famously, catching the booster on return. The arms can handle hundreds of tons, aligning with sub-inch precision. But during launch, the chopsticks retract fully before ignition to avoid any contact. Sensors on the OLM and tower monitor vibrations, forces, and timing, feeding data back into SpaceX's simulations. This iterative loop refines engine sequencing, TVC algorithms, and clamp release timing with each flight, why Starship's development has seen rapid progress, from explosions in early tests to successful orbits and catches by late 2025. Here's the payoff most people overlook. By optimizing onboard TVC and minimizing ground hardware stresses, SpaceX makes Starship lighter and more efficient. The vehicle doesn't need to be overbuilt for worst-case torque alone. That burden is shared with precise control systems. This increases payload capacity. Starship aims for 150 metric tons, about 330,000 pounds, to low Earth orbit in fully reusable mode scaling to 250 tons expendable. Every pound saved in structure is a pound for cargo, enabling Mars missions or satellite constellations. And the tower's role shines brightest post-launch. Mechazilla catches Super Heavy during descent, approaching with lateral motion and rotational energy that must be absorbed. The chopsticks act as dynamic stabilizers, damping the booster's movements rather than stopping it abruptly. By mid-2025, SpaceX had achieved multiple successful catches, proving the system's reliability. One infrastructure handles stacking, launching support via OLM, and recovery, both phases dominated by extreme forces. If you're seeing Starship differently now, that's intentional. SpaceX isn't just building rockets. They're building integrated systems where vehicles and infrastructure function as one machine. The OLM and TVC handle liftoff torque, while Mechazilla enables the reusability loop. It may not be as flashy as engines or heat shields, but without this synergy, Starship would be heavier, less efficient, and far more dangerous to launch. And here's the final cliffhanger. As SpaceX pushes Starship toward even higher thrust levels, potentially over 20 million pounds with Raptor upgrades and heavier payloads, torque management becomes harder, not easier. Which raises a fascinating question. Will future versions incorporate active ground damping or AI-driven pre-ignition adjustments? Will the boundary between rocket and launch pad evolve further? If that future arrives, rocketry enters an entirely new era. If this video helped you understand how Starship actually survives liftoff, hit the like button. It tells the algorithm this kind of deep engineering content matters. Subscribe for more breakdowns that go beyond headlines and explain how these machines truly work. And let me know in the comments, should future rockets rely more on intelligent launch infrastructure or should everything be handled on board? Share this with someone who thinks rockets just go straight up, and I'll see you in the next one.